tank beats Hunter! Phantom! Turret! Tank beats everything! Oh, man! <laughs> I can do this all day! The Scorpion main battle tank is as instantly recognisable as the Warthog, and its size, design, and power speaks to something very primal within us. Although Halo takes place in the 26th century at face value, tank technology hasn't advanced very much from our current, real-world counterparts. The Scorpion still functions exactly as you'd expect a tank to function, and the offensive and defensive features are still simply variations of modern-day tanks. But as I said, that is at face value. The reality of the internal workings of this behemoth of rolling armour and some discreet innovations that have been made make this tank a very different beast altogether to even our most powerful tank platforms nowadays. But how so? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00 and today we're giving the Scorpion main battle tank the most detailed treatment. The most detailed series is pretty self-explanatory, we look at various technologies from the Halo universe and break them down to exquisite levels of detail. I am quite confident in saying that if you're looking for highly detailed breakdowns you will not find the level of detail I get down to here anywhere else. The most detailed series is linked in the description at the end of this video in playlist format so you can consume the immense levels of detail I've thus far covered until your brain turns to paste and falls out of your ear. But first, I just want to go over a few updates regarding what's going on with the channels and such. If you want to get straight to the most detailed breakdown, I completely understand, just skip to this timestamp, just be warned you're going to miss out on some really interesting news and some possible competitions, so, you know, might be worth sticking about. Halo is not the only stuff I cover. I have a second channel called the Lawcore Multiverse where I've given other technologies from other franchises the most detailed treatment, and this includes the Nano Suit from Crisis, the Praetor Suit from Doom, and the History of Augmentations from Deus Ex. Due imminently is the most detailed breakdown of the Iron Man Mark III armor, so be sure to subscribe to Lawcore for new content coming out over there. And I duly note that approximately 57.5% of my epic viewers here at Installation 00 are not subscribed. So, to avoid missing a ton more most detailed breakdowns, lore videos are plenty, and coverage of Halo Infinite news as we grow closer to its release, hit that subscribe button if you like this video. Also, just a quick shout out to my patrons, your custom battle damaged Spartan pectoral plates are on their way to you. Next, I tackle the Needle Around, the Mjolnir Power Supply Control Unit Power Bank, and the Flood Sport Key Rings, the Reclaimers, Metarchs, and Monitors. Expect those in due course. If you like the look of these perks to being a patron, be sure to jump over to Patreon and support the channel over there. There are tons of perks and benefits, and there is no better time to jump aboard. In addition to that, if you're not already in the Discord server, I strongly recommend you jump across, because I'm looking to running some competitions exclusively on the Discord server in the coming weeks. So again, if you want to be in the running for some Installation 00 themed merch, jump over to Discord. And there's our timestamp. Welcome to the future. So with all that said and done, Time to get on with the Scorpion Most Detailed Breakdown. The M808 Scorpion was originally built by Calypse Defense Systems, although it was acquired by Acheron Security following the Human Covenant War. Calypse Defense Systems has been around forever, though it has used different names in the past. Stationed on the colony of Meridian, CDS secured the contract for the development and manufacture of the M808 Scorpion, the M850 Grizzly, and the M145D Rhino alongside various other products for the UNSC. This brought financial and economic stability to Meridian. Having been in service since 2218, the Scorpion has been the main battle tank of the UNSC for over three centuries. The Scorpion's design and function has remained largely unchanged due to an extremely resilient and versatile design being well fitted to the battlefields of the 24th, 25th and 26th centuries. It has seen action throughout the insurrection, as well as for the entirety of the Human Covenant War. It is affordable, simplistic, 
rugged, highly adaptable, to the point that the UNSC now uses the M808 Scorpion as the design template for all modern main battle tank designs. Its characteristic four-track design and high rear-mounted primary armament give the Scorpion an intimidating profile, while also granting it a higher vantage point over the battlefield. Its functionality and the integration of very sophisticated computational systems allows the Scorpion to be manned and operated effectively by a single person, where with current real-world tanks the crew number is generally between three or four individuals. The massive downscaling of personnel was made possible only through the integrated HCI systems, which we'll cover shortly. The sheer scale of the Scorpion likely plays to its strengths and may even counter some of its weaknesses. The unbridled success of the Scorpion's design is as a consequence of the components and innovations that follow. The Scorpion's central chassis is quite a simple configuration. It consists of a central heavily armoured hull, a turret mounted cannon towards the rear, a pintle mounted machine gun and the operator's compartment forward of the turret, and four independently suspended track nacelles. Its four track nacelle design, with each track mounted on an independent computer controlled suspension system, allows the M808 to traverse, climb over and manoeuvre around large debris or other battlefield obstacles, and prevents the vehicle from being easily disabled. In a traditional tank, the suspension goes up and down, however due to its design, certain angles and certain elevations mean that it can topple or roll on sharper angles. The suspension on the Scorpion means that it can hypothetically sit on four different angles of varying elevation and still maintain the tank's level firing position. These four pods connect to the main hull via extremely heavy gauge articulated joints that itself is shock mounted to the hull with extensions of the computer controlled suspension in place to keep all four track pods in full contact with the ground as the front two pods are connected to the forward hull from the rear of each of those pods whereby the rear pods are the opposite, connected to the rear of the hull from the forward section of each of the pods. This, under normal circumstance, would force the tank to bottom out. The weight in the center of the vehicle would pivot the track pods at the center of axis, pressing the belly of the hull downwards towards the floor. The computer controlled suspension actively monitors the relative position and angle of all of these separate sections and adjusts the suspension accordingly to keep the Scorpion stable and level. Traditional tanks tend to fight from a defilade, which is effectively a hole dug into the ground. They don't tend to fight out in the open, contrary to popular belief, unless absolutely necessary. But against armour, they will always fight in a defilade. To gain cover and concealment from other tanks, that being said, not every location is ideal for fighting, which can mean that the fighting position may have a steep breakover angle go up too fast, or if the angle is too sharp when coming out of the covered position, can cause the gun to max out or entirely lose track of its target, which can leave the tank exposed and be forced to acquire the target again. The Scorpion's unique suspension means that this breakover and max out of the gun elevation is minimal in almost any type of fighting hole. As the tank won't be forced to go up and then down suddenly, it simply rolls over even some of the sharpest inclines. Each pod contains an electric motor connected to a drive wheel and bogies that hold the road wheels. By definition then, the Scorpion is actually a hybrid engine design, combining both combustion and electric drive designs. The main power pack, a hydrogen burning turbine located at the rear of the hull, charges the storage batteries for each track pod's motor and powers the other core systems. The turbine is a strikingly simple engine, being nearly identical in its design to a modern jet turbine engine, but on a smaller, more compact scale, and using hydrogen as its fuel for combustion, and focused on utilising the torque of the turbine for energy generation than thrust generated by the exhaust gases. The two primary air vents for the engine are on the hull either side of the turret. These pull large volumes of air into the engine's intake, where it is compressed by a series of compressor stages. The now compressed air, holding approximately a 10 bar, is then mixed with the hydrogen fuel and detonated. The exhaust is then ejected from the back of the engine passing over a turbine which is directly connected to the centre axle of the engine, which turns the compressor blades at the front of the engine, pulling more air in for combustion. This rotational energy is also then utilised by a very powerful generator unit which generates enough electricity to charge the storage batteries and power the rest of the tank. This engine core can be removed for servicing with minimal tools and lift equipment. The Scorpion's efficient engine allows it to travel up to 750 kilometers or 466 miles before needing to be refueled. 
The chassis is covered with heavy ceramic titanium armor plating, making it incredibly resilient to damage from small arms and ordinary plasma weapons, however it is still possible for infantry portable anti-armor weapons to inflict catastrophic damage. Additionally, the armor does not provide any special resistance to heavy plasma impacts and energy projectors. There has been no further explanation of what ceramic titanium armor plating actually is, but given the prevalence and success of spaced armor, sloped armor, and composite armors like Cobham armor, it is likely that the ceramic titanium armor of the Scorpion is an advancement of this. If I were to guess, I'd say it's likely to be a hybrid of Cobham armor and sloped armor principles. The Cobham element of the armor is where smaller plates of ceramic armor are encased within a matrix element and compressed during the creation so that once the plates were finally finished, the inner ceramic plate was under constant pressure. 21st century Cobham armor was designed as such because it was a long understood property that holding ceramic tiles under constant compression by their matrix greatly improves their resistance to kinetic energy penetrators, which is difficult to achieve when using glues. The matrix has to be backed by a plate, both to reinforce the ceramic tiles from behind and to prevent deformation of the metal matrix by a kinetic impact. This is where the titanium comes in. The specialist titanium A armor is likely the metal used here. The plate will be backed by titanium A and likely fronted by it as well with an intermediate air gap built into the plate to assist in slowing, redirecting or deflecting the hot gases and penetrators. The sloping armor element is highly evident from the shape of the scorpion. You'll notice there are very few surfaces on the tank which are directly vertical. All armor surfaces are sloped backward at quite a steep angle. This design is extremely intentional. Sloping an armor plate makes it harder to penetrate for anti-tank weapons, such as armor-piercing shells or kinetic energy penetrators and rockets. If they take more or less a horizontal path to their target, as is often the case, a projectile hitting a plate at an angle other than 90% has to move through a greater thickness of armor, compared to hitting the same plate at a right angle. Further to this, the slope is much more likely to cause deflection, deforming and ricochet of a projectile. When it hits a plate under a steep angle, its path might be curved, causing it to move through more armor, or it might bounce off entirely. Also, it can be bent, reducing its penetration. Shaped charge warheads may fail to penetrate or even detonate when striking the armor at a highly oblique angle, thereby saving the inner crew compartment. Having most of the Scorpion covered in this kind of armor affords it highly increased odds of surviving a given encounter. On top of this, since the vast majority of vehicles more sensitive components are towards the rear, and the crew compartment being at the approximate middle of the vehicle, it means it can take significant damage having much of its armor damaged, track pod nacelles stripped, and armor plating to the turret and center hull being either absent altogether or damaged close to failure, and still remain operationally effective. The Scorpion also features blowout panels on the turret. These are areas with intentionally weakened structure, usually panels with slightly weaker bolts than the armored bulkheads. By failing in a predictable matter, they channel the overpressure or pressure wave caused by an explosion in the direction where it causes controlled, directed minimal harm instead of causing a catastrophic failure. The panels on the turret are over the magazine, meaning should the turret take a direct hit and the magazine catches fire, the panels will fail predictably, venting the explosion outward rather than being contained and ultimately killing the crew. Once this has happened, the tank can, in theory, be repaired. Add to this the ability to remove and swap out track pods quickly and easily in the field. Once a beach tank has cleared the immediate area, the damaged track pods can be removed with minimal tools, manpower and time, and a new or undamaged one put in its place, getting the tank mobile once more. The turret houses the Scorpion's main gun, as well as ammo stores, an autoloader, and targeting sensors. The turret can perform a full 360 degree rotation in around 8 seconds and has a barrel elevation of 60 degrees and a depression of negative 30 degrees. The gun in question is the M512 90mm smoothbore high velocity cannon. Smoothbore indicates that the barrel of the gun lacks rifling. And as for high velocity, the exact muzzle velocity of the gun isn't actually specified anywhere. So I conducted a quick experiment in Halo 3's Forge. Now you've got to bear in mind this is in-game physics and they do differ quite wildly to what 
it's stated in the law in any other regard. But nonetheless, I set up a scorpion and positioned a warthog 500 feet from the tank. The grid on the floor of Sandbox just so happens to be a 10 foot square grid, so it was 50 squares away. I then fired the tank's turret at the warthog and used that footage to time the round from the muzzle flare from the tank to the round striking the warthog. It travelled the 500 foot distance in 0.429 seconds. Extrapolating this gives the muzzle velocity of 1162.79 feet per second, or around 354 meters per second. This by modern standards isn't considered high velocity, however, it is believed that the round being fired is a 90 mm tungsten slug, at least judging by the in-game quotes, and there has been no disambiguation regarding the round perhaps being a fin stabilized discarding sabot round. So at face value I'm going to accept that it's a 90mm tungsten round. If this is the case, the mass of such a round would be somewhere in the order of 78 pounds or about 35 kilograms. Being able to fire this kind of mass at over 1100 feet per second would suggest if it were loaded with a sabot round but maintained the same charge size, the gun could feasibly fire a kinetic energy penetrator at hypervelocity, or basically supersonically meaning the long-standing argument the Scorpion's main gun is small and weak by modern tank standards would be utterly incorrect, giving the Scorpion's main gun a massive advantage over any real-world counterpart. This is also in line with the fact that the Scorpion can destroy another Scorpion in three shots, blowing the turret clean off of its opponent. Only blows of immense power and destructive capability are able to do this. The gun can fire, reload and fire again within 4 second intervals giving it an effective rate of fire of around 15 rounds per minute. The M512 cannon is compatible with at least two varieties of ammunition, the first being the high velocity 90mm tungsten round, and the second being the salient one canister shell, which fires a canister shell packed with shot, similar to a shotgun round but on a much larger scale. When fired, the canister disintegrates and its shards and projectiles spread out in a conical formation, causing a wide swathe of destruction. This provides the Scorpion with a powerful method of clearing obstructions like thick brush and concertina wire which can become entangled in the treads and sprockets, as well as engaging large numbers of lightly armoured targets, being especially lethal against infantry. The high turret placement is highly advantageous given the Scorpion a higher point of view over the battlefield but also meaning the hull of the tank is more protected if firing from a defilade as it can afford to be deeper and thus further from harm, while the turret can be clear of the hull and still fire effectively. The gun features a very large muzzle brake intended to redirect a portion of propellant gases to counter recoil and unwanted muzzle rise, as well as reduce the area needed to take up the strokes of recoil and kickback. This is coupled with a recoil dampening spring this is positioned at the breech of the gun and enables recoil absorption through compression of the spring and thus retraction of the barrel by up to a foot. The gun also features a bore evacuator which assists in evacuating excess gases left over after the rounds is fired, so once the breech is opened there is no hot gases still left in the chamber to cause a flareback, which can cause fires and, if bad enough, even ignite the magazine. The secondary gunner station located at the right of the commander's compartment is equipped with a ring mounted pintle. The pintle can soft mount any typical infantry support weapon, however the standard mount is a M247T machine gun which is capable of firing 7.62 armour piercing rounds at a very high rate of fire. Along with its offensive capabilities as an anti-vehicle platform, the M808C also fills an anti-infantry role, its machine gun can eliminate heavily armoured and shielded targets at medium range. Along with its weapon systems, the Scorpion is equipped with anti-mine detecting software and electronics to help increase safety while in use. The Scorpion features an impressive advancement in the form of an integrated human computer interface system. As previously stated, the Scorpion requires only a single person to operate effectively, fulfilling the role of three to four crew members in modern day tanks with an optional second if the particular variant supports a gunner position as opposed to the coaxial machine gun placement. It achieves this by interfacing with the occupant via their neural interface. The basic function of a standard neural interface is to act as a friend or foe indicator so that radar signatures will pick up the owner's signature and identify it as friendly. 
The most basic interface, known as the neural chip, is implanted at the base of the skull in all UNSC military personnel upon activation, but it can be replaced with a more specialised neural lace should the need arise. The basic neural chip is completely embedded under the skin and possesses no external interface port, unlike more specialised variations. It is likely that being part of the armoured division of the UNSC as a Scorpion driver necessitates that their basic neural chip given at enlistment is upgraded to a more sophisticated model, allowing their brains to interface directly with the Scorpion systems. The user can then drive the Scorpion while simultaneously being able to target and fire the Scorpion's main gun. On the turret are an array of sensors, these likely include sensors that relay information directly back to the user's neural lace and possibly grant them a form of heads-up display for targeting and firing, or even a form of extrasensory perception granted by the neural interface. The neural interface allows a single crewman to effectively control every function of the tank, rather than requiring a standard crew of driver, gunner, and commander. The Scorpion also utilizes thermal sights mounted on the main gun for target acquisition as it allows the gunner to see through dust, weather, and other elements that might otherwise block the sights of the gun. Prior to firing the main gun, there is a process known as lasing. During this process, the target is scanned with a laser. It calculates range, wind direction, estimated downrange wind direction, barrel temperature, round temperature, barometric pressure, curvature of the earth, humidity, and adjusts for barrel droop for the follow-up shot. All of this combined allows the gunner to paint the target they want to engage, pull the trigger, and it will land that time every time. The M808B features a coaxially mounted M231 medium machine gun. The machine gun is mounted beside the primary weapon and thus points in the same general direction as the main armament, relying on the turret's ability to traverse in order to change arc. The tank can also be outfitted with a 105mm gun for greater offensive power. The M808B2, otherwise known as the Sun Devil, is an air defence system and is built on a slightly modified Scorpion tank hull. The Sun Devil uses a full rotational turret fitted with two twin-linked 40mm autocannons. Ostensibly an anti-aircraft vehicle, the Sun Devil was used in anti-personnel roles throughout the insurrection years and proved to be very effective in clearing Covenant light infantry from contested points. The M808B3 Tarantula is a heavy fire support variant armed with twin Scimitar 40 by 178 mm hypervelocity rocket pods. Most of these unfortunately have been re-equipped as M808Bs due to their ineffectiveness against Covenant forces. The ODST Scorpion is a variety of heavily armoured main battle tank. The ODST Scorpion has been secretly designed for the 105th Special Forces with a stealth grey armour that emits a low radar detection signature. Its revamped turret houses a heavily modified 90mm high velocity cannon with dual recoil brakes to minimise muzzle blast for greater accuracy and stealth when firing. The M808C swapped out the coaxially mounted M231 medium machine gun for the ring mounted Pintle M247T machine gun, enabling the gunner position to fire in different directions to the primary turret. This enabled the Scorpion to cover its own blind spots within reason by overlapping fields of fire from the turret and gunner position, and the machine gun doubles as point defence against targets that get close enough to be underneath the turret's field of fire. The M808S Scorpion is armed with a high velocity cannon for engaging enemy vehicles and a medium machine gun for engaging enemy infantry. Scorpions in the field can be upgraded with submunition canister shells that deal heavy damage in blast radius around their target. Unlike other variants of the M808, the M808S shows notable design differences featuring a larger, broader turret housing, its main cannon, similar to the later M820 Scorpion, which succeeded the M808 in general service. The M820 main battle tank is similar in most respects to its predecessor, the M808 Scorpion, but it differs from the M808 in a number of important ways. It is significantly lighter than its 66 tonne predecessor at only 35 tonnes and can achieve a top speed of 128.7 km per hour or around 80 miles an hour, a significant improvement over the M808's top speed of 96.5 km per hour or 60 miles per hour. The M850 Grizzly is the heaviest armoured vehicle in service with the United Nations Space Command Armed Forces 
and is usually deployed in situations that require devastating firepower and resilient design in a single mobile package. The Grizzly shares a similar design to the M808 Scorpion as it is based upon it and is designed by the same company. For ease of mobility across varied terrain, the Grizzly is fitted with the same 4-track pod configuration of the classic 808. The Grizzly, however, has a fifth stationary tread in the back of the chassis. This affords the Grizzly greater stability when firing and due to its increased mass. The Grizzly is protected by exceptionally thick armour plating that allows the tank to sustain large amounts of damage, making it even more resilient than the Scorpion platforms. The tank's resilient armour is capable of tolerating multiple blasts from heavy plasma cannons. At 12.3 metres or 40 feet in length and a mass of over 71 tonnes, the Grizzly is much larger than the Scorpion. Although the Scorpion reaches significantly higher speeds than the Grizzly's maximum speed at 69 km per hour or 43 miles per hour. The turret is larger than the Scorpion as it is designed to support two M310 120mm smoothbore high velocity cannons as opposed to the M808 single M512 90mm cannon. The dual cannons are capable of overwhelming an energy shielded enemy vehicle's defences and piercing its hull in a single volley. When paired, the two cannons have a high rate of fire due to the Grizzly's turret featuring an innovative mechanism that uses the recoil impulse of one gun to more rapidly load the other. They can be fired in turn to one another and also simultaneously depending on the wishes of the operator. The beginning of the Human Covenant War cemented the Grizzly's reputation as the bane of enemy armoured vehicles. On the open field the Grizzly was practically unstoppable and often forced the Covenant to deploy naval assets in order to decisively end the threat that even one or two of these tanks could cause to their staging areas and supply columns. The Scorpion main battle tank is an extremely resilient, rugged and powerful weapon platform. Its sheer size, profile and configuration grant it many advantages on the battlefield. The Scorpion has remained in service for over three centuries due to its combination of affordability, simplicity and versatility in its rugged, adaptable design, features that cannot be matched by any superior main battle tank design. The M808 has proved itself to be the workhorse of the UNSC armoured attack vehicles and it is a widely accepted fact tank beats everything. Thanks for watching, stick your comments down below, I look forward to what you have to say. I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons Neek the Silent Cartographer, Brian, Sebastian, Red Sea, Darian, Stalker of the Realms, Falcon X003, Alvin, Mr. Fell, Flaming Halo and the Revanche, the Holders of the Mantle, my Glorious Reclaimers, my Loyal Metarchs, and all the other patrons that have jumped aboard to support the channel, you guys are awesome and all this wouldn't be possible without you. If you like Halo or Disgust to insane levels of detail, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon so you're told the second a new video hits the shelves. Be sure to support us on all major social media channels including Discord, and if you really love the channel consider heading over to Patreon and supporting the channel over there. It would mean the world to me and free up more of my time for me to put into this content and other Halo related goodness. Take it easy everyone, and find peace in the domain.